G'day guys, Socket here. Today we're going to take a look at a question that pops up regularly in car audio tuning and that is in which order do I do EQ and time alignment work? Like do I do my time alignment work and then EQ or do I do EQ and then do my time alignment? And the answer to that is all to do with the fact that EQ filters introduce phase shift. Um, and so therefore you want to make sure that you do all of your EQ work uh, first and your time alignment work second. But don't take my word for it, let's go take a look at some measures. So here we are out in the garage, I apologise in advance for any traffic noise, chainsaws, dogs barking or anything like that. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Melbourne and people are out and about. Uh, but here I am in the garage set up with the laptop and the analog microphone ready to do some sweeps so let's dive in um, so first of all what we're going to do is take a measure of the left mid um, so we just click start wait for the sweep here we go and we should have our first measure yep here we are now let's change the colour to black and let's put on some smoothing. I always like to use one sixth. So here is our typical left mid measure, big stonking scoop out here uh, about one point uh, sorry one thousand five hundred hertz and you know peaky bumps and stuff all over the place. Typical uh, left mid before you've done any EQ work. So um, let's pretend that we are going to do our time alignment before we do our EQ work. So the way we would uh, do a measure for um, for time is that we would go into the DSP, uh, we would select the speaker that we want to work with which in this case is our front mid, uh, we go to time, our front mid's on output C and let's say we're going to add you know one point, uh, let's make it two milliseconds of delay right so we've worked out that a timing we need to add two milliseconds of delay to uh, get this aligned with the other mid base uh, sorry the other mid driver um, so we would uh, take a measure so this would be mid plus two milliseconds right of delay all right so let's uh, take the measurement there's the sweep and of course here comes the measure and let's change that to one sixth and we'll compare the two now um, here's the frequency response we've added a little bit of delay and because uh, we're using a single mic to do our sweep measures and we're not getting averages you know it's not lined up perfectly but it's pretty damn close which is what we'd expect when we add on time we would expect uh, the frequency response to pretty much remain unchanged but uh, the impulse and the phase to be shifted so let's go and have a look at that now so if we look at the phase um, so this is the original phase and then we look at when we've added on two milliseconds and you can see the phase in fact has shifted to the left um, at about two milliseconds worth right see that there and if we go into the impulse um, once again we can see the original impulse in black and then the uh, the blue impulse is the new one and you can see that um, uh, they're both the same shape it's just that the blue one is time shifted uh, to the right uh, two milliseconds okay so that's uh, that's great so let's pretend we've now time aligned our um, our speakers and everything's great so now we're going to go in and do some EQ work after we've put the timing in so um, what we don't want is the uh, the timing of the impulse or the phase to now move because we've got all our speakers um, time aligned so let's simulate this we'll go into the DSP We'll go to our left speaker. We'll, you know, add some, add some EQ. You know, so some cuts, some cuts here, and some boosts. You know, whatever. Typical stuff that we would do when we're doing EQ work. You know, something like that. Right? And um, we, um, 
yeah, we won't play with the crossover, we'll just leave it as it is, but typically key work. And we'll go back into REW and we'll do another measure. So this is um, uh, EQ after time alignment, right? So let's start the measure and we'll see what effect the EQ has had. Right, so here is the measure. Let's make that a nice bright red. Something like that. That's better. And we will add some smoothing. And as expected, we um, compared to the original, we can see the boosts and cuts that we've made to the EQ, which is what we want to do when we're adding EQ. We want to change the response of the speaker. And, and so the EQ is doing exactly that. Uh, but if we go into overlays and we now go into the, um, the impulse response section, um, what we can see is that uh, we'll put on the two millisecond delay. Um, what we can see is that the shape of the impulse response has changed. The timing hasn't, like they're both still lined up, that's fine. Uh, but the EQ has actually changed the shape of the impulse response, which makes sense because we've added some filters to cut and boost. So what EQ does is change both the frequency response and the shape of the impulse. It doesn't change the timing. But what does it do to phase? So let's have a look. So if we turn that off and we look at our original impulse, uh, sorry, phase in blue with the two milliseconds. What happens when we add EQ after we've time aligned it? Well, it throws all of our phase out. Adding EQ has you know, no longer is it lined up. It is <laughs> made it all wonky, right? So, which is not what you want after you've already um, time aligned everything. So the takeaway from this is uh, if you do any EQ work after your time alignment, you will throw your time alignment out. So let's go back and uh, repeat that, but do it the other way around, where we do the EQ work first. All right, so we're going to go back into the DSP. This time we're going to um, leave the EQ work, and we're just going to get rid of the time first. Let's put that back to zero. And we're going to go back in, and we're going to take a measure now of the speaker with just the EQ. So this is... Uh, left mid plus EQ. So we're taking the measure. There's the sweep. And now change the colour again. I'm sure that uh, REW does it on purpose. <laughs> Not sure. Alright, applying some more smoothing. And let's have a look at the left mid versus the original measurement with the left mid and then the blue with the EQ work. So as expected, the EQ has cut and boosted in the places that we want. Totally expect that. Let's go look at the overlays and we'll start with the impulse overlay first and look at the, um, look at the mid with the EQ and look at the mid with uh, out EQ okay and once again you can see when you overlay them you can see the blue part sticking out um, where the response has changed and which is exactly what we expect because um, we, the EQ is going to change the response of the impulse but it's not affecting the timing they're still starting at the same time fantastic but what's happened to the phase um, and as we would expect turning off some of these others um, and looking at the original phase response, as soon as we add some EQ to it, EQ changes the phase, okay? Which is fine because we haven't done our time alignment yet. And when we do our time alignment, we'll bring the phase um, in line with this blue EQ'd line, right? Um, that's fine. All right, so let's go back and now let's do our timing and we're going to say, okay, our EQ work's done. Now let's add our timing. Right, so we'll go into uh, our time, add on our two milliseconds. There we are. Okay. Oops. I'll shut that down. Let's go and take a measure. 
So this time it is EQ, um, it is EQ first, EQ before timeline. Oops. So we've added two, two milliseconds because that's what we need to get our time alignment right. Let's take the measure now. All right, and that's in green, that's fine. Um, let us add on the smoothing and let's get rid of that one. So that one and that one. Is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, so the time alignment hasn't changed anything. And if we go into the overlays and we go to impulse, load that up, get rid of that, and we compare the left mid EQ before and after. So, you know, once again, the difference is that it's time shifted. And if we go into phase, um, and we can see that. Uh, once again, the time has also shifted things. But if I put on those two, they are exactly on top of each other, right? The EQ after time alignment, EQ before time alignment, the time is exactly where it needs to be. The difference is, is that we haven't stuffed up the um, timing by doing the time alignment after our EQ work. So, um, Guys, that brings us to the, uh, I guess, the end of the video. Um, I hope, you know, this question of do you do timeline before and after, um, while it's a little confusing to kind of follow here, um, I hope that uh, kind of makes a bit of sense um, and will help you um, maybe improve your tune um, in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next episode.